Welcome to ReadYourTicket.com. Today we're going to talk about how to reverse engineer a Charles Nenner cycle. We're going to do this in parts. Today we're going to do part one. But first, ReadYourTicket.com, myself and anybody with RTT has no association with Charles Nenner or any of his associates or his website. We have never subscribed to his service. We are only taking, only reviewing what's freely available on the World Wide Web. Charles Nenner has a website called Charles Nenner Research at charlesnenner.com. He's been on television. He uh, is a well-known in the financial world as a cycle forecaster. He constantly say, says he works out cycles and makes predictions of price targets of tops and bottoms based on cycles. And he often says that the fundamentals catch up later. Now, if we go to the um, Nenner Notes, scroll down you can read it we come across a, uh, a chart which shows shows the unemployment data monthly unemployment data with lots of sine waves now in these uh, series of videos we're going to show how to determine these sine waves and why they're why they sort of put together and how they're combined or the way I think he does it put it that way Also, if you go back to the home, and I think you go to the article section, scroll along to the, this article here, you'll find um, by David Pett of Financial Post, a Canadian news service, I think, you'll find a chart at the bottom of Apple Inc. At the bottom, you'll find, you'll find the Charles Nino forecast line. So the previous chart sh showed lots of sine wave cycles, and this chart shows the forecast line. Those sine wave cycles are ingredients that go into this forecast line. All right. So what we're going to learn when we study reverse engineer these cycles is that you're not going to learn how to re reproduce a Charles Nenner cycle forecast to the fourth decimal place. That's just simply impossible. However, we will we can discuss the fundamentals within the cycle forecast process that are assumed to be within the Charles Nenner Charles Nenner forecast process. It's basically the fundamentals are the same when forecasting a time series. A time series is, a, for example, a price line of open, high, low, close. The reviewer should understand cycle forecasting is not an exact science. Cycle forecasts can be wrong more often than they are correct. If you should also understand no cycle forecaster gets 100% or even 50% correct all the time. Not even Charles Nenner. The information in this video is educational entertainment for re uh, reasons only and are not investment advice. We are not investment advisors. Please reread this statement. Thanks. Now here's the, here's the uh, copy of this, the sine waves that I showed you. Now, what the, to determine these sine waves and what cycles to use and what periods um, requires a fundamental knowledge to why cycles work to use them. Okay. So it all really started around the Great Depression by this chap here, Edward R. Dewey. This is his bio here. As I understand it, he was asked by President Hoover to uh, work out a cause of the Great Depression and why it sort of came about. And he actually got into working about working into, um, with cycles. Um, and he found cycles in nature, economic data, obviously the planets, whatever. You. And he ended up writing a book. With, um, here we are, the cycles, the science of prediction. And later on, his work, or his life work, actually um, went into forming a foundation, the foundation for the study of cycles. Now, this is a, there's a um, huge resource of information at the foundation of cycles. But unfortunately, over time, 
or whatever's happened to the uh, foundation that they've not maintained it. For example, the, the site has uh, not been maintained, the services have not been maintained. So, but there's still plenty of free articles around, and there's um, some, some really good stuff in there. I, I was personally a member of the Foundation of Cycles and the service that I received was provided by a chap called Richard Mogi. Richard Mogi has um, since left the uh, Foundation of Cycles and uh, is now working on his, with a uh, corporation or an investment house called CMFF. There we go here. He's the chap in the middle. There we are, Richard Mogi. He's been working with Cycles for um, many years. He gives a, I think he gives a webcast, um, and he actually run, runs a magazine, which he used to run under the Foundation Cycle name. Now he's doing it under his own name for the, for this crowd. If you want to learn about Cycles in the traditional sense, and under the name of uh, all the sort of the learnings of Dewey and Hurst and what have you, um, it's good to sort of check out his service. I, I was subscribed by the foundation for about 12 months. So he's a good source there. I enjoyed my time with him. Right, he also actually... Um, here we are, here we are. Yes, okay, right. Richard Mogi actually wrote a paper Um, called, here we are, Principles of Cycle House and Using Cycles in Trading. And it basically goes through how to determine dominant cycles, half, uh, you know, half cycles, discusses first knowledge, discusses how to uh, find a cycle, obviously the Bartels test there, talks about uh, pretty much the traditional stuff about learning about cycles. This is a, a good document. It's also available by the um, members download section. There's no copyright on it, so I don't see any problem with having it been downloaded. Right. Dewey himself actually wrote an article as well for the uh, Foundation Cycle magazine. This is actually on the web. You can search this. And Dewey wrote a, this thing called The Case for Cycles, and it goes through and talks about why cycles actually work. Now, where did I get down? There's a little chart down here. Yeah, right, okay. Alright. Here we go. For example, he, you might find a series of cycles. Here's four cycles, all with different peaks and troughs of different periods. We've got a 21 month cycle, 30 month cycle, 41 month cycle, 44 month cycle. And then he adds the four cycles together to get the forecast line. Pretty much exactly what Charles Nenner actually gets up to. So these are the fundamentals behind um, cycle forecasting that, that have been basically been used by Charles Nenner. The fact that Charles Nenner has actually taken it to the nth degree is uh, full credit to Charles Nenner. So that's a, this is an interesting article worth your reading if you uh, want to learn about cycle forecasting. Um, right, uh, the other thing, um, cycles are everywhere, um, they've been studied by many people, they've been given different different names, um, you can research them on the web by googling these names, for example, uh, the kitchen cycle 60 week, you got the 20 week cycle, you got the president cycle, election cycle, seasonal, seasonal cycles, planetary cycles, actually have uh, a year cycle breaking down to days of full year, half year, quarter year. And, all, and Hurst, uh, Jim Hurst actually worked with the uh, cycle formatters to find the dominant cycle in the data series and either divide it by a third or a half for trading. So the cycle is all around. Now I'm just going to end part one here. This is a general knowledge of cycles with plenty of reference material. And you can find the stuff mentioned in part one.
on these locations for your own research. In part two, we'll talk about the software and the tools used to um, determine cycles or how we can sort of work out how to forecast from cycle analysis. Thanks for watching.